Hi guys, welcome back to another golf vlog with Jen. So today we are at TPC's East Course and my original intention of the video was to show you guys around the East Course and basically provide you guys with a little guide. So all the places that I would advise you aim to and all the places that I would advise for you to avoid. So it kind of backfired on me and it was pretty funny because I ended up going to all the places that I was going to advise you guys to avoid. Which I think actually says a lot because you know how in mental training with regards to golf, people always say that the mind cannot process things like negatives. So like don't go into the hazard or don't go into the bunker. And that is basically exactly what I did. So for instance, on a hole like this with a hazard in front, instead, well, basically this hazard in front and bunkers on the right side and on the left side. So I would ask you to choose a good target. But instead of me choosing a good target because I was so focused on the bunker or the hazard, I ended up going exactly where I did not want to go. Obviously, that did not happen in this hole. But as you guys will be able to see later, it happened a lot throughout this round and a lot more than it normally does for sure. Obviously, I have misses as well, but I usually miss it on the bigger side or the wider side. So it's pretty interesting to see how a little experiment like this actually affected my game. So let's start from the second hole here. As you can tell, there are a lot of bunkers lying down the left side and although the right side does have trees, it is definitely much more open there and I'm usually aiming more towards the right side just because I play a draw so I know that anything from the right side drawing back will still be either on the right rough or in the fairway and of course because I was thinking so much about not going into these bunkers over here as I'm going to be able to show you guys with that zoom in, that is exactly where I ended up going. So as you'll be able to see here, the bunkers are really high and this hole is pretty long. So I still had about 170 yards and there was no way I was going to be able to hit a 6 or 5 or even a 7 iron out of this. So I just took a short club and hit it out because basically that's one of the reasons why you don't want to go to this left side and in these bunkers because when you're in the bunkers, you are playing it as a three shot hole because there's no chance that you can get over the slips. So because my ball actually got stuck in that rough, it looks like it's pretty close to that other bunker, but it was actually where I wanted it to go. And I had this third shot in, so it's not like I got into a lot of trouble, but obviously when you can't go for a par four and two, it does make the hole a lot harder. And I actually hit a really good shot here, but it ended up, the green here is pretty hard, so it ended up going pretty far over and this was the putt that I had for par and let me know guys that was <laughs> right in the center to me what do you guys think would you guys have given me that for par or would you have said that's a bogey so let's move on to the next hole which is a par 5 so this par 5 is pretty narrow so honestly if you were playing here for the first time I would tell you to hit whatever club you Feel most comfortable with hitting it straight because most importantly you do want to get it on the fairway and i hit a little bit of a fade but it was not too bad it's still on the side of the fairway and as long as you're somewhere close here this is a par five so unless you want to try and go it for go on it for two there's really no point trying to hit your hit a club that you're not comfortable with because as you will we will see there are bunkers on the left side and trees down the right side so you do need to pick a good target here in order to get on the fairway so i was on the fairway here so for this second shot my intention was to tell you guys not to go towards the right side because there is water lying down the right side and the fairway on the left side is actually a lot wider than it seems from this angle and guess what i went exactly towards the water which is definitely not where i would normally go because there's so much space down the left side so the right side is just a really bad play Obviously, there's a little bit of rough on the right side, but still, there's absolutely nothing on the left side. So do not play on the right side of this hole at all. And even then, you can hit whatever club. It's not that long of a par 5. So you should be hitting a comfortable club that would basically not get the water in play. But as I said, once I started thinking about the water, for some reason, that water was in my mind and I just hit right towards that water. That's why I was on such a bad lie. But it was okay, I still made it onto the green after that. And this was my putt. And not too bad a putt, but just a little bit short. So, so far it's not too bad, but as you will be able to see from the next hole, 
which is actually my least favorite hole on this golf course because as a draw player you can see why the entire left side is filled with water and normally i would just aim more right because honestly all that's on the right side is another hole and you might be blocked by some trees but it's not too bad and obvious of course as i'm thinking about the water i hit it straight into the water and that to me really shows the difference and the importance of choosing a good target rather than focusing on where you don't want to go and i know obviously when you come to holes like this the first thing in your mind is you don't want to go left but at the same time your your body already knows that you don't want to go left so you don't have to remind yourself not to go left because there's hazard Instead, you should just be thinking about where you do want to go and choose a good club that's going to make you comfortable enough to hit a good shot. So on this next hole, this is a par 4. And again, I was... Okay, there is water on the right side, so you do want to hit it more towards the left side. But my thought process was you don't want to hit it towards the left side today because the pin is behind on the left side. So the approach shot becomes a lot more difficult when you're on the left side of this fairway. But of course, me thinking not wanting to go left, which is as you can see from here, that tree is pretty huge, so it does block the pin when you're on the left side. And I went, ended up going to the left side and behind the tree. I did not expect to be getting into the, this much trouble today, but I guess there's no better time to experiment and to find out what works and what doesn't work for you. And obviously for me, overthinking about where I do not want to go is not something beneficial so and I know that it's this is true for a lot of people as well and there's no denying that it will be in the back of your mind the places that you don't want to go but this just shows the importance of choosing places that you do want to go because well the more you focus on where you don't want to go the higher the chance you're going to be there so guys, it's very important to choose good targets and making sure that you're focusing on the right things. On this hole, well, obviously there's water short and water over, so there wasn't really much for me to think about in terms of left or right. So I just choose a good target and hit a pretty decent shot here. So you can tell the quality of the shot when I'm not thinking about where I don't want to go is so much better than when I'm thinking about, you know, don't go left or don't go right. I think in terms, that's the biggest thing for me, especially when I'm thinking about direction-wise of where I don't want to go, because then your body naturally will start to do things that are funny and will probably make you go exactly where you don't want to go. So a nice birdie there on the signature hole at TPC's course, and you always love making a birdie on this hole. Next up, we have this par 5, and there is water down the entire right side. So guys, guess where I'm going. No, I didn't actually go in the water, but I got pretty darn close, which is kind of silly because look how much room there is on the left side. There is an OB on the left side, but it is pretty far left. So there's so much fairway in the center and on the left side, and I don't know why I decided to hit a fade and get it about five yards from going in the water. But I stayed dry and I just decided to hit a five iron for my second shot because there are there is a big water hazard on the left side of this well of the second shot so I did want to just hit something that was for sure going to get me on the fairway because this is a par 5 and I wasn't going for the green anyway and as you can tell from this clip look how much space there is down the left side and this is just on camera so imagine if you were there in person there's so much more space on the left side than you actually think and if you play a golf course more than once I think it's sometimes beneficial just to go down and look from that you're, for instance, after a tee shot, look backwards and see the hole from where you're hitting and versus where you teed off. Usually, it actually makes such a big difference. And sometimes a fairway might seem narrow from the tee shot or from where you're hitting a tee shot, but it actually really isn't that narrow. It's all about perception. So next up, we have this par three, bunkers down the left side, and of course, I decide that I want to go play with those bunkers. And I actually ended up in between the bunkers, so I didn't go into the bunker. But from this slide, it was in the rough, and usually it rolls out quite a bit from this for, for this chip shot. But because the greens were hollow thine, it was not really rolling out that much. As you can tell from this clip, you can see the sand patches. So I left myself with a much longer part than I thought I was going to have after that chip. Because I thought that chip was pretty good. But it's okay. Sometimes bogey is a good score 
So this is the last hole on this front nine. This is a par four. And you do want to hit a good tee shot here. And this is a hole that I find a lot of satisfaction in hitting a good tee shot on, especially, and I don't know why, I think it's because it does look pretty narrow from the tee shot. And there are bunkers down the left and right side. So it's just one of those holes that you always feel a little bit better finishing your day with when you hit the center of the fairway. So after that, I had this shot for my second shot. And I think I was hitting about a six iron, if I'm not mistaken. And it's over water, so you do want to hit a good shot here. And the pin today was above a slope, so I took more club, but I actually ended up going over. And I had this chip, which I was a little bit aggressive with because I wasn't sure if the greens were spinning or not. But it's okay, just a little three-footer tap in. So not too bad. Let's move on to the next nine, which don't worry guys, the same thing happens again. So over here, right side, OB, left side, just trees. And I can carry that bunker. So basically, we should be aiming over that left bunker. But of course, I go towards the right side, the one place that you can't miss on this hole. And you know, end up somewhere in between the trees and <laughs> on this huge slope here. It's, kind, it's honestly really funny because I almost never hit it towards this side because there's so much space down the left side and then the one time that I start thinking about where I don't want to go, there's exactly where I went. So I'm sure a lot of you guys don't actually think about this and maybe don't even realize but how often does it happen to you that you think I don't want to go to this spot and you go exactly where you say you don't want to go? And that is something that people always talk about in terms of the power of attraction and you really want to focus on the positive. So for instance, on this hole, you would say, I want to hit it towards that orange roof or choose a spot somewhere or a leaf or something rather than saying, I don't want to hit it right into the trees or left into the trees or I don't want to hook it or I don't want to fade it. So it's always using positive terms instead of negative ones so that you can well, basically program your mind to know what you what it wants to do rather than what it doesn't want to do. Because as I said in the beginning of this video, there have been a lot of studies that says that the mind doesn't know how to process don't and no. So it just processes what, well, the negatives. And I don't know if you guys saw that, but that is such a Malaysian thing. And it's so hilarious because we always have this joke about the power of the hand. And we just use our hands to like, when you want to cross the road, you just put up your hand and the cars will stop for you. And for some reason, your hand is more powerful than a car, like a car coming to you at 50 kilometers an hour. So that's definitely a Malaysian thing. If you're Malaysian, you would know what I'm talking about. But let's stop babbling and go back to golf. So this is the next hole. And of course, you don't want to go to the right. And guess where I went? Into the trees on the right side. And... <laughs> left myself with a really long shot because I hit a really high fade so that ball had absolutely no distance and I decided I was going to punch a 5 wood out towards that green box over there and just wow. let it draw back that was actually really nice. so after that which was a pretty good shot I was happy with that and again using the power of the hand <laughs> and I had this chip so of course once you when you have to chip when you have to hit out well I didn't really chip I hit a 5 wood so when you have to hit out and not go towards the green you don't want to give yourself the best opportunity to make par and that's by putting it on the fairway so that you can at least get some decent contact and decent spin and every now and then you save par from the trees see that guys that's how you play golf <laughs> Alrighty, next hole and this is a par four and the reason why i'm hitting a three wood is so that it's short of those bunkers so i can aim directly at those bunkers but of course, thinking about not wanting to go towards the left side with those trees, I hit it straight to those trees. But lucky thing, I have enough distance to carry them, so I was just in this rough. But it wasn't the most ideal lie, as you can see the ball sitting down, so I know that it's going to be... Well, it's going to come out pretty hot, and I hit that really good, but there's just absolutely no spin, and it landed at the pin and almost flew... Well, it did flew over the green. So... I had this chip coming back and I was hitting a 58 degree wedge here and hit a pretty well decent chip for me it's not too bad I always take it when you have a tap in par 
and let's move on to the next hole which is a par 3 so this par 3 is pretty long the green's a little bit elevated so you do need to hit it on the green for it to kick up and most of the time if you hit the green chances are you're gonna it's gonna kick pretty, quite a bit so i landed it about one or two yards too short so it did not kick up and i ended up short of the green see as you can tell i was in that gur patch so i really was one or two yards too short but this chip was a little bit too aggressive with it again i wasn't really too sure with the hollow tining some chips were spinning and some weren't so it's a little bit difficult when it's not consistent but that's just part of you know beautifying the greens and i'm sure it's going to be a really great condition again pretty soon so it's okay we'll just take that bogey and move on to the next hole which is a par 5 so this par 5 well i did think about not wanting to go right because there are trees on the right side and bunker on the left but I really was trying to focus on hitting a good shot and picking a good target and I actually hit my, so far, honestly, my only good drive of the day and it was down the center of the fairway so that was a good shot but then I had this second shot and I did the same thing over again of thinking you can go right but you can't go left and guess where I ended up going yep, down the left side <laughs> This is honestly pretty funny even to watch over <laughs> and I was just I was just stunned because I never do that if I say there's space on the right side I usually choose a good target and just hit it towards the right side and even if I miss chances are it's going to be on the right side but somehow today it's just going the opposite direction of where I wanted to go over there I had a third shot from the rough so it actually was okay but the rough just pulled the face close a little bit so it ended up just being left side of the green so I had this chip 58 degree wedge and if you follow my Instagram you already know I made this chip for birdie so not too bad result but you know after pulling that second shot into the trees and we have the next hole which is a par 3 so this par 3 I'm hitting a 7 iron it was about 144 so my 7 usually carries about 145 and you do want it to be carrying up to the pin because short is going to be in the water and I actually ended up going a little bit over so I had this downhill putt but it's okay it's still a putt for birdie which is what we'll always take and even with the sand you can tell that it's still pretty quick I didn't hit that very hard and just made a little par so next hole is the par 4 and we're almost done with this round guys this par 4 there is water down the right side so it is better to hit it down towards the left side of the fairway and I hit it a pretty decent shot but I didn't catch the center of the face so it did fade and it did fade towards the water which is why I'm laughing because you know for some reason my ball is just attracted to all the hazards today but it's okay it was on the fairway I just had a very long shot into the green so I'm Pretty sure I'm hitting a 5 iron here, which is a long club to be hitting into the green. So just picking a good target and trying to hit a smooth 5 iron here to give myself a good shot yeah. that's going to be on the green. Beautiful. And that's exactly what I did. So it did land on the green and bounce a little bit over. So I had this putt. So most of, as you can tell, I hit quite a few over today, but I was thinking that the hollow time was going to actually stop the ball from bouncing too much, but it actually ended up bouncing quite a bit more. So sometimes you do need to just get a little bit adjusted to different conditions. And obviously the grounds are not always going to be perfect, so you do need to know how to play in different conditions. And we're finally on the last hole, guys, and there is bunkers down the left side and trees down the right side. And I hit a little fade again into the trees. <laughs> Are you guys enjoying watching me from the trees? <laughs> and I almost lost my ball in this little... I don't know what's going on here. All the leaves were on it and I almost couldn't find it. So I made a little green spot there for my shot, as you can tell. And I hit a 5 foot out towards the left side because there is water down the right side and I didn't think that it was going to carry enough. Again, with the power of the hand, guys, I really need to stop being so Malaysian and stop using my hand. But it's pretty funny. And I had this chip coming back. So 
anyway i hope you guys enjoyed watching this vlog i think it was quite an interesting experiment because i really did ended up going to a lot of places that i normally do not go because i would normally try to avoid them so the moral of the story is always focus on positive words and focus on where you do want to go and not where you do not want to go because chances are if you focus on where you do not want to go you're gonna end up going there so pick good targets and play great golf guys see you guys again soon